Imagine waking up tomorrow morning, not in your cozy bed, but stark naked on a scorching African savanna 50,000 years ago. No phone, no Wi-Fi, no coffee shop around the corner. Just you, your modern brain, in a world that's trying to kill you with every step. Lions, hyenas, and venomous plants are the least of your worries because you don't even know how to find clean water or make a fire. Could you survive a single day? Most of us wouldn't last an hour. Today we're diving into the brutal reality of Paleolithic life, debunking the romantic myth of the noble caveman, and exploring whether your 21st century self could hack it in the Stone Age. Spoiler alert, it's not like your last camping trip. Stick around because by the end, you'll not only respect our ancestors' genius, but also rethink what it means to be human in today's world. You're standing on this vast, sun-baked plain, heart pounding, squinting at the horizon. Is that shadow a boulder or a predator? Before you can even think about food or shelter, you've got to avoid becoming lunch. The Smithsonian's Human Origins Program tells us that our ancestors faced astonishing challenges from predators like the short-faced hyena, a beast the size of a lion with jaws that could crush a human skull in one bite. These weren't the cute hyenas from The Lion King. They hunted in packs and humans were on the menu. Now here's where you're already screwed. Modern humans are soft. We've got anxiety, sure, but it's tuned for deadlines and social media drama, not spotting a lion's twitch in the grass. Anthropologist Clint Janales from Oxford points out that hunter-gatherers even today grow up tracking animals from childhood. They notice tiny details like a bent blade of grass or a faint paw print that you'd walk right past. Your brain is wired for Netflix binges, not survival. If a hyena is stalking you, you're not outsmarting it. Your dinner. But let's say you dodge the hyenas for now. Your next problem is the environment itself. It's 100 degrees Fahrenheit or maybe it's freezing at night. You're naked, remember? No jacket, no shoes. The Paleolithic world didn't care about your comfort. Archaeological digs show our ancestors used caves or overhanging cliffs for shelter. But finding one isn't like Googling nearest Airbnb. And if you're thinking, I'll just build a hut, good luck. You need tools, materials, and skills that took thousands of years to develop. The 5,000-year-old Iceman Utsi had a coat made of goat and sheep hides stitched with grass fibers. Sounds simple. Try skinning a goat without a knife, tanning the hide without chemicals, and weaving grass without a YouTube tutorial. You're not MacGyver, you're shivering. We romanticized the this back to nature vibe because we watch Bear Grylls and think I could do that. But Bear's got a camera crew and a medevac on speed dial. In the Paleolithic, you're on your own and nature's not your friend, it's your executioner. The fact that our ancestors didn't just survive but thrived in these conditions blows my mind. They weren't tougher than us. They were smarter in ways we've forgotten. Let's talk fire. In movies, cavemen rub two sticks together and poof campfire. In reality, making fire is a nightmare. Sites like Kubi Fora in Kenya show that fire was a game changer for early humans, letting them cook food, stay warm, and scare off predators. But creating it, that's a PhD level skill. Anthropologist Brian Fagan notes that Ice Age humans use specific woods tinder and friction techniques honed over generations. Modern experiments like those by primitive skills experts show it can take hours to get a spark even with practice. Now imagine doing it while starving, freezing, and hearing hyenas in the distance. I've tried making fire with a bow drill in a survival class, and let me tell you, I was sweating, cursing, and sparkless after 20 minutes. You are not lighting a fire on day one. Food is even trickier. Hollywood loves showing cavemen spearing mammoths, but hunting was insanely complex. Fossil records from eastern France reveal that Ice Age hunters used fire to herd wild horses and reindeer into valleys for slaughter. This wasn't one guy with a spear. It was a coordinated team effort planned over months based on animal migration patterns. You with your desk job and zero tracking skills aren't pulling that off. Foraging, forget it. A 2016 study from Israel found that early humans ate 55 types of plants but picking the wrong one like the jequirity plant seeds could kill you with a single bite. I once misidentified a mushroom on a hike and spent the night Googling, am I poisoned? In the Paleolithic, there's no WebMD. 
one mistake, and you're done. Here's where I get philosophical. We think we're smart because we've got iPhones and quantum physics, but our ancestors were geniuses in their own right. They didn't just memorize 55 plants. They passed that knowledge down through stories, songs, and rituals. Compare that to me forgetting where I parked my car last week. Their survival wasn't about brute strength. It was about observation, memory, and community. We've outsourced those skills to apps and algorithms, and that's not a bad thing, but it makes you wonder, are we really as advanced as we think? To make this real, let's look at a modern story that echoes the Paleolithic struggle. In 1971, Julianne Kepke, a 17-year-old, survived a plane crash in the Peruvian rainforest. She was alone injured and surrounded by jaguars and piranhas. Julianne had one advantage. Her parents were biologists, so she knew a bit about the jungle. She followed a stream to find a river, ate wild fruit she recognized, and avoided predators for 11 days until rescue. Sounds heroic, right? Now imagine her without that knowledge. She'd have been dead in days. Julianne's story, story shows that survival isn't about grit, it's about specific hard-earned know-how. In the Paleolithic, that know-how was your birthright passed down from your parents. You, you're starting from zero. Or take the sand people of the Kalahari Desert modern hunter-gatherers who still track animals and forage. I watched a documentary where a sand tracker spotted a kudu's trail in what looked like random dirt. He could tell the animal's size, speed, and direction from a few scuffs. I'd have seen nothing. The sand grow up immersed in their environment just like our ancestors did. For them, the savanna is a library of clues. For us, it's a death trap. This gap isn't just skills, it's a mindset. We're so used to controlling our world with tech that we've lost the ability to read it. Let's bring it closer to home. Think about the last time you went camping. Maybe you forgot the tent poles or couldn't get the fire going. Annoying right now, imagine that's not a weekend trip. It's your life, no grocery store, no backup plan. I remember a camping trip where my friends and I spent an hour trying to set up a tent in the rain, only to realize we brought the wrong stakes. We laughed it off and drove to a motel. In the Paleolithic, that mistake means hypothermia. These stories remind us how fragile we are without our modern crutches. While you're dodging lions and failing at fire, there's another threat you can't see disease. Genetic studies from 2024 show that Paleolithic humans dealt with pathogens in their teeth and blood 32,000 years ago. A cut from a sharp rock could turn septic without antibiotics. Parasites like worms were so common, they shaped our immune systems. Your modern body used to sanitize water and vaccines isn't ready for this. Even drinking from a stream could give you giardia or worse. Our ancestors knew which water sources were safe, but you're guessing and every guess is a roll of the dice. This is where I get a bit biased about history. The Paleolithic wasn't just a physical challenge, it was a biological war. Our immune systems evolved under constant attack, which is why some scientists think modern diseases like allergies come from our bodies missing those ancient parasites. It's wild to think that the worms trying to kill you might also have kept you alive in a weird way. But without that evolutionary conditioning, you're a sitting duck. Here's your one glimmer of hope teamwork. Dig sites show that Paleolithic humans lived in bands of 25 or fewer sharing tasks based on skill. Hunters tracked foragers, gathered elders taught. Cave paintings at Lascaux weren't just art, they were survival manuals showing animal behaviors and seasonal patterns. Brian Fagan says wildlife biologists can tell the exact time of year from these paintings down to the animal's fur. That's not just skill, that's a culture of knowledge. But joining a band isn't like signing up for a book club. You're a stranger with no skills, probably slowing them down. They might not even speak your language. Your best bet is to learn fast watch, mimic, and contribute. Your modern brain has the same raw potential as theirs, but you've got to unlearn your reliance on Google and rediscover curiosity. I think this is why I'm so fascinated by our ancestors. They didn't survive as lone wolves. They built communities that turned raw intelligence into collective power. 
It's a reminder that even today, our strength lies in collaboration, not competition. So could you survive the Stone Age? Honestly, probably not. Experts like Janala say, urbanized humans lack the observational skills, physical conditioning, and environmental awareness to last more than a few days. Your best shot is finding a group to adopt you, but even then you'd need luck grit and a learning curve steeper than Everest. The Paleolithic world was a meat grinder, and you're not the lean, mean survival machine your ancestors were. But here's the lesson that's okay. Our ancestors didn't just survive, they laid the foundation for everything we have. They invented tools, mastered fire, and built communities that turned a hostile planet into a home. Every time you use a smartphone, drive a car, or eat a meal, you didn't hunt. You're standing on their shoulders. The real question isn't whether you could live in their world, it's how you'll honor their legacy and ours. Will you take your modern advantages for granted? Or will you use them to solve today's problems just like they solved theirs? Next time you're stressed about a Wi-Fi outage, remember your ancestors stared down saber-toothed cats with nothing but a sharp stick and a plan. You've got their DNA act like it, 